Okay. Well, let's talk about let's talk about a couple supplements. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to get into jet lag in a, a little bit later, but you know, obviously, the most the top of mind supplement yeah. people think about when they think about sleep, they think melatonin. Melatonin. So melatonin is a hormone. It's a very old molecule. It's in plants. It's in other stuff. It's not a sleep hormone, except by association. Melatonin is the hormone of darkness. Melatonin is a nighttime signal. You produce it at night. A great example of how it's not a sleep signal, it has no sedating properties whatsoever. Melatonin doesn't. You give melatonin to a nocturnal animal, it wakes them up because it's a nighttime signal. To to the degree to which your body gets a nighttime signal and that makes you sleepy, yes, it can promote sleep. Melatonin can promote sleep in humans. For that reason, it can help you fall asleep faster. It can help you stay asleep. It can help you sleep more restfully because it's strengthening that nighttime signal. That's what it does. It's also why it is almost universally useless for insomnia. Because if you have a conditioned arousal, remember, now now, now everyone knows what conditioned arousal is. If you have a conditioned arousal, your body already knows it's nighttime, still can't sleep. So taking melatonin is almost never going to work to treat an insomnia condition. But if you don't have conditioned arousal, if you don't, if you just need a little bit of a boost, actually melatonin probably works just fine. It's also, you produce it natural. During the day, your levels are almost non-existent. They r- start rising in the early evening. They pick up, they peak during the night, and then they drop off right about the time you expect the sun to come up. And light suppresses it. So even if you're at peak levels during the night, turn on a bright bathroom light, plummets. Then you turn the, off the light. As long as the clock still thinks it's nighttime, it'll regenerate them again. Might take a delay, especially the older you get, the, the less flexible the system is. But... That happens naturally. Now, some people, when they take melatonin, they might be taking the wrong dose at the wrong time. And, and then there's the other problem. There was like a few studies that have been published where, I mean, almost all these melatonin supplements that are out on the market have huge variations. Yeah. Like some of them have like a hundred times more melatonin than it's actually what's on the Yeah, like, th- those, label. So, so that's the thing where... There's a lot of them out there that can be unreliable, especially from some of the manufacturers that don't have the good quality control. It is regulated by the FDA. It's just, you know, there's just not enough money for enforcement. So there's not a ton of enforcement, but any of the larger companies, they're actually going to have pretty good quality control. And they are, if you look at those, the ones that are the bigger companies that are on the shelf, they're almost always right on target for what they should be. And I say that because what's on the bottle is actually not what's supposed to be in the bottle. And a lot of people don't know this, but the bigger companies that have the higher quality and the higher quality control are following the law. And the law says that the amount on the bottle has to be within a certain percentage of the amount that's in the pill at the expiration date. That is the definition. So if you have a supplement that's sitting on a shelf with a three-year expiration date and you're working with a company that's trying to do everything really well and correctly, your chemists and food scientists have to calculate exactly how much they have to put in that pill so that as it degrades naturally over time, how much will it degrade to the point to hit the target two to three years out? That's actually the calculation they're making. So in melatonin, that answer is usually 30 to 50%. So when you buy melatonin off the shelf and it says five, it's probably closer to eight, seven or eight when you buy it. And then two to three years later, yeah, it's five because they did their job. They followed the law and they had really high standards in their manufacturing. But it's still, you're probably taking a much, you're probably taking a higher dose and they can't tell you because the way the law is written, it's like, if you, if you tell people what's in there is different than what's on the bottle, you've now changed the label and now you have to beat that. It, it's, it's complicated. The law was written in, in the way that I think they didn't foresee this problem, but people need to know that 
actually, if it's a good brand, it's actually going to be higher than what's in the bottle because they're going to calculate in the overage needed to, to be able to degrade to the point that it hits the target. Isn't that great? Like it's people crazy. don't know this. So I, less is more for sure with, yeah, with when it that's comes also to why I say if you're still having effects, actually your dose might be too high. Just cut it in half. When it comes to melatonin, I know there's like a lot of questions I get from people is, well, if you're taking a melatonin supplement, are you going to then stop making endogenous yeah, melatonin? Yeah, there is, to my knowledge, there is no evidence that this, that, that actually ever happens. To my knowledge. It's a worry, but melatonin is so is so old that like you're going to produce it. Like the the way to stop producing natural melatonin would be aging. That reduces it. But to my knowledge, there is no data that shows that continual use of supplementary melatonin changes or or reduces your ability to naturally produce it at night. Well, with that said, are there any other, I mean, I've heard of a variety of supplements yeah. like magnesium, lavender, glycine, yep. L-theanine, any, I mean, yeah. you know, moderate evidence that yeah, yeah. some of these work? So a lot, a lot of them have evidence that they're definitely not nothing. Um, none of them have beaten placebo to treat insomnia. The closest that came was valerian. Um, but when you pool the data, it still doesn't beat insomnia, uh, uh, placebo for insomnia. Sort of, it can't, but it is sedating. It can be calming. Um, magnesium also does seem to promote sleep in a number of different ways, actually, more than just one way. Um, doesn't treat and doesn't usually treat insomnia, but it can help promote sleep. Glycine also great data on glycine showing that people who take glycine, it can help um, fall asleep, help stay asleep a little bit better. Um, a lot of these supplements, it can help you fall asleep and stay asleep a little bit better. Some of them don't do anything to sleep per se, but they work in terms of calming. So calming isn't sleep inducing though for people who don't have insomnia, because if you have conditioned arousal, you can be calm and still not sleep. But for people for whom a little bit of calming and relaxation is really helpful, that's where things like the L-theanine and some of these other more calming thing, like the chamomile and some of that stuff that can be calming can actually be helpful. Um, even if they don't actually technically do anything on the sleep side. Um, other things that can help promote sleep, things that have anti-inflammatory and, and antioxidating properties. Remember, your body's doing a lot of that healing at night. And so if you can help give it those raw materials. So this is where there's certain supplements out there that actually seem to be um, seem to have some of those, those anti-inflammatory properties. And when you take them, you might be sleeping better. I mean, when people take ibuprofen, they can also sleep a little bit better because like it, it, it those awakenings and, and arousals due to discomfort might be just a little bit less and might help you sleep through the night a little bit more. Um, there's a few things like, but that's the difference where, where just because something is not nothing doesn't mean it is a cure-all. It's like not black yeah. and white. A lot of these supplements can be helpful. I recommend them for all of the things that they do, but I also recommend them for none of the things that they don't do. And I think there's a gray area that I think people have a hard time wrapping their head around. Yeah. No, we're, I'm definitely not talking about insomnia. Right. And, you know, some people just like to have mm. a little bit of help. And Glycine is interesting. Yep, That's one I've been interested in. And have you seen any of the thermal regulation stuff on that? Like I haven't seen the thermal regulation body, stuff. Poor body but, temperature. But it seems so. So it's, it's unclear to me whether that's a cause or an effect. Right. But but either way, does it matter if that's what you're taking it for? It's more of the GABA inhibit, like more of that yeah, inhibitory. It, yeah, it does. It well. does seem to promote that those inhibitory. But so a lot of people who are taking workout supplements at night for recovery, like. Take one that's, if you're taking aminos at night, branched chain amino acids in general could be good for recovery, especially after trading. And, and if it's got some extra glycine in it, all the better. But if it's got a lot of glutamine in it, you want to not be using that because glutamine is, act, is, is activating. And so, I mean, I've had athletes I've worked with who like complained, complained about their insomnia. Turns out they're taking these nighttime supplements with a whole bunch of glutamine in it. And that's sort of what's counter, that's, that's what's getting in their way. So it's not just about supplements at night that can be helpful. It's avoiding stuff that can get away, like B12. B vitamins are good to take at night because they can help with recovery. B12 help boosts the ability of light to suppress melatonin. You don't want to take that at night. You want to take that in the morning. 
B12 is great in the morning because it can help wake you up a little more for a bunch of reasons, including its ability to help mel light suppress melatonin. But you don't want it at night when even a little bit of light can get start getting in the way. Fascinating. So take your multivitamin in the morning, not in the evening. Yeah. If if I, I I have I have this dream one day of having like an AM vitamin and a PM vitamin, where like some stuff might be better at night. Like you want to if if sleep is all about recovery and repair, put those raw materials in play at the time you want to use them. If they're going to degrade, or you could just take them in the morning if they're going to hang out all day anyway. But yeah, I mean, some is some the the, the that multivitamin you might want to take in the morning.